Greetings, welcome back to Pyre. Let's continue our journey. We'll see our next ride in the Isle of Kylmer. Ulfred joins you as you soar high above the storm ravaged waters on approach to the infamous Isle of Kylmer. Among its cursed qualities, it seems as wretched stone means I cannot hide the smoke. One of the downsides, more misfortunes, I suppose. The wagons the drive in seem not to mine, at least. In fact, they seem more animated now, even than usual, sir. Perhaps they feel some sort of connection to this place. Tarik, do you, do, do you suppose the accusers were able to make it here intact? They all have seen it in the stars. Oh, we soon shall know for certain. That we shall. Take us in, please, reader. Mm. Okay, so the name says the waters along this path contains virtues for those who can find them. We can also someone here who owes him for a past debt. You may land in within the Deathless Tempest, far west of where you first bridged through to the shores beyond. You wonder which sort of celestial landmark lies hidden amid these waters, though for now you have some time left before continuing onward. Deathless Tempest we waited for the Deathless Tempest to subside. We waited, but the Under King, he merely laughed and laughed, for the Deathless Tempest does not subside. What lies beneath that stretch of sea to cause such an upheaval is best left to myth and speculation. We made passage, nonetheless, through sorcerers, aid, and fortune, scarce seen with the surrounding environs. We did detect the alarm from to the west. Solia Moore detected the, the presence of the treacherous A who lured him into exile and then followed him in turn. Moore, in his wisdom, thought it best to be avoided. At last did we arrive on distant lands, though seeing them provide little comfort. We are surveying the horizon amid the eerie stillness of Sharp Show when Sir Gilman screams forth commanding your attention. Hark! Master Reader! By this night's kin, I he has spotted something in the depths! Sir Gilman plunges into the waters, then soon re emerges bearing something new. A veritable boon for the glory of the Nightwings! Versus shipwreck shipwreck. So Gilman is fuming in anger over something, so much so that you are hesitant to approach him, but you approach him anyway. I decided it's too late a sentence from this night. He notices you then and seizes up. He begins acting with a nonchalant as though his outpost did not just transpire. <laughs> Greetings to you, noble master reader. What brings you to this night this afternoon? Mm -hmm. Is everything alright? You maintain a gentle tone with him and ask whether there is something he might wish to discuss, so Gilman perhaps could benefit from talking through his woes. He stands there for a time, silent and dejected, but then... Master Leader, this knight cannot escape the horrors of his past. It seems that you would hear them, then you have this nice apologies ahead of time for burdening you further with his troubles. Having said that, here, then, are the troubles you requested. You are, of course, familiar with the siege of the spiral sanctum. But this night, the memory of it is like a wound which will not close. This night stood there on the front lines whilst the highway remnants descended upon us. So furious was their assault that our chain of command was ruptured instantly. We of the sea dominion, we require orders to perform our duty. Without such orders, why? We surely made a very easy target there, that eve. 
one by one, and two by two, they picked us off, becoming bolder, some of them shrieking with laughter all the while. This night, he saw his comet cast aside like sea flies. How this night survived, he does not know for certain, even now. Perhaps it was that he attempted to push you and to detain his own main commander whom you met when you first met this night. That cursed suit the luge. If not for his craft and cowardice, the sparrow sanctum it might have held at least a while longer. But instead, we were routed, rendered spineless both in form and deed. Till the luge was first to turn and flee, as our chain of command crumbled. And for this night, he failed to catch his knight commander. He must have looked a coward too. Thus came time for penance, and this night, why, he insisted on the only course of action reasonable. He insisted on the sentence to the downside. And, as you can plainly see, his wish was then fulfilled. How absurd that he should re-counter his own knight commander here, soon after. Thus did the Snyder become obliged once more to seal the luge. We took to the waters in the Sea of Solace, where soon we met the Pyre Heart, a triumvirate exclusive to our kind. It was plain to see that they led to the war of Mithal and served the Luge. They thought he could provide it. The leadership they sought, and his was too much for of a court to decline. As for this knight, being of the same dominion, he had little choice but to comply, or so, at first, he fought. When this night, when he encountered you in the night wings, something awakened within him. With so little hunger left to lose, and so much left to gain, it became eminently clear this night stood a better chance within your ranks than those of Sir Luge. And there is little left to say. This knight cannot escape his past, and yet he chooses to believe that he was spared the day not merely by coincidence. Perhaps Andy or as yet has a plan in store, in which this knight may play a part. This knight, he clings however vainly to that hope. He settles away, his head bowed low. It seems best to leave him be for now, you sense he feels relieved at having shared all this. A messenger imp somehow tracks you down in the steady currents of the first tempest and delivers to you recent news and rumors from the other side. Specifically, the imp shares details regarding Panitha and what became of her since she was liberated at the fall of Solium. She found herself back in the homeland of her enemies, where, despite her connection to the High Remnants, her past transgressions were forgiven. In fact, she was asked to join the military council, giving her a new background. Yet, she refused to, co to, co to cooperate and instead demanded to be reunited with her sister, Tamika. But when they threatened her with this person to exile and insisted that she take the opportunity, Pamifa said at last that she would think it over and return to her decision soon. Next, she was seen, however, was among Wilfred's sons and daughters of the revolution, where it is said she has attached her loyalty at this one time. We thank the end for bringing you this news, which soon gets your companions hoping. The specter should meet between the wind and the flightless shall not be soon resolved. If ever at all. I hope she and her sister get a chance to see it, set things right between the two of them. Or that she finds some peace some other way. Never was this time, but never was before had this night found even a thing for most bitter enemies and yet and yet even no bunny fan proved I open indeed for this night. I know they're bad for her, you know. No, I got no idea what it's like having to give a care for someone else like that. Sounds like a real thing. Are you one of our sisters right now? 
I'm sure she cares for Bunny for I'm sure for it. Lisa wishes for Tanika to find her way and her sister in the common world. In spite of some mixed feelings, the news of Tanika's liberation gives you and your fellow Azar's proposal. You wake your shadows to hold at the Isle of Kyoma. Bizarre outcroppings give it a forbidding feel. In the distance, you hear all the gibbering noises that sound like rifles. The Isle of Kyoma. The traitor Kyoma Robkola. Whereas he brought about our empire's fall, whereas he nearly claimed the life of our dear Solium, we forgive him. We have forgiven him, we give him a certain thanks to him, for he has played a vital part in the star's plan. If not for him, then we, the Eight, would never have aligned. We never found the rope caller. He fled into the sea, towards an isle which we knew well to avoid. It was there we think that Climber's tattered mantle finally did him in among the wild imps. Should the stars ever converge above that isle, it shall be to signify that their long dance across the skies is drawing to a close. Oh my god, how you find me all the way out here, I mean, this is for extra special customers. I'm, I'm only joking, only joking, you're the only customers I got. Gotcha again, only joking about that too. Uh, because I got tons of customers, it's just they already brought a lot of stuff today, so they're not here, okay? Anyway. I just got in a little something here, which maybe you'll be into. You've been hearing about these little numbers for a while. Check them out. He reveals to you a set of twin rings, a jewel band, to present to, to, present to hope, and rune band to present to present to hope. Thinking these fingers are supposed to be for a couple of lotteries, know what I mean? <laughs> Not anybody could you probably use them to ready to do to buy off of me. Uh, I was gonna get for myself, but anyway, I let me know if you want it. <coughs> Sorry. Let's see. Broadcast is all greater is present quickness hope. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. I can give it to you and I can give it to oh. Use her. Okay. Tell all your friends about us because I already played mine. <laughs> downside tra travels. You cannot survive the downside if you cannot get around. Powers shall descend on you, or tempests so shall share you to pieces. But it's just the way it is. Traveling through the environs is no simple feat. Consider yourself blessed if you were born a cur. If not, however, you shall have to find a means to cross this land without the benefit of four strong poles. Most Chlorian believes this untamed land can be traversed through means unnatural. I thought at first that he meant sorcery, but he suggests invention. He speculates that carriages could cross this land by harnessing its fury. A wild thought in my case, my pulse shall suffice. Downside climate. I know of no polite way to describe the climate here. It oppresses every living thing except perhaps a na the native flora in the in a few specific areas. Once more the recommended course is to keep moving. 
Moving keeps you warm when it is cold or when it is very hot. You use that strength you can to move to somewhere you can think and breathe. breath. The weather in the downside seems intrinsic to the different regions, which my good friend Molten Lithia shall describe. Shelter can be difficult to find, and you cannot stay in it for very long. Perhaps, however, shelter can accompany you rather than constrain you. Mm. A visit from my favorite reader. What is the occasion? How very kind of you to visit me again like this. Oh, lovely reader. For I was just standing about in the blackness of the void, thinking it would be most pleasant if something were to happen for a change. There was a long period of time that this incarceration of mine failed utterly to do anything but bring me peace of mind, not much of punishment. I invite you to imagine an upbringing among the Sisters of the Arch, living on the outskirts of civilization. Your day is all full of training which could kill you, or just cripple you for life. How do you suppose I lost my sight? Through glorious battle with the scribes, or in a careless sparring session with my master? <laughs> but I forgot not forgotten enough just yet. In any case, at first I welcome the prospect of not having to struggle every moment to survive. But. In less than two centuries, well, I started to go terribly bored. It did not help at all that the night wings of the early days were the strogiest lot you could imagine, obsessed with obeying the book as strictly as they could. Some of them started to remind me of myself, I think. When I was young, such idiots thought of them. <sighs> but what am I saying, lovely reader? I shall not bore you further with the such manners. I would have bored myself to death back then if only I could die. Like so many other things, I think mortality is something often taken for granted until it is taken away. So, given your mortality, what say that we get back to business here? Go forth and show your adversaries what you have learned. Here, among the boundless waters of the Isle of Kyalme, you await the signal of the stars. There is no sign yet of your expected adversaries, the accusers. Then, the do these will fight up to you. These are cautions you that he had some history with his adversary, Lendel. This seems to be indicated that Lander has a personal vendetta against him. But before we can explain anything further, the stars begin to call you. Eve to you as ever, O oh you exiles of the Nightwings. The eight scribes dragged you all the way into the blasphemous Isle of Kaelma. Here you are to be surrounded by even more gibbering nitwits than usual. The triumvirate you stand against shall be the accusers. Reduce their pyre to a smolder and step closer to freedom. Now prepare yourselves. Your companions are assembled and ready for the rites to commence. However, there is still no sign of your adversaries or accusers. The little Imtizo screeches something, cautioning or is alert. But then, someone leaps forth from the shadows and he grabs at his mask. Ha! <laughs> Got you, miserable beast! I knew it! Even after all this time, I knew that you were still among the ranks. Tiso is angry to have stumbled into an apparent trap laid for him by the Silence, fiend! 
You rob you by freedom and my dignity. Your evil shall be ended here and now, and you, Night Queen, shall not bury me dust again. Come then, my accuser, for we face again none other than the spawn of our cursed imp. How dish swallow! Let us show him now that he is a disgrace. He's a whistle something angry back at him. Whatever transpired between him and Lendor in the past, Lendor evidently has not let it go. Now we shall get started. Ruki. Tizo, the choice is cast. Tizo, I hope never to, uh, to see Lando again, but this place is too crazy. Nightwings, the wicked fiend of you serve is an affront. He denied my rightful freedom in my moment of triumph. I shall never forgive him or any of you. As the ride commences, the aims throughout the cavernous area roll with excitement. Our struggles and our plan bring more entertainment to these lonesome creatures. Begging your pardon, sir. The aims of the owl are quite passionate about the rights. Just now they offered a bounty in soul if our trial the right proves worthy. They would pay us in exchange of what exactly? And where did they get the soul, for that matter? My understanding is they wish to see us perform various feats of glory. As for the source of their wealth, who can say how much soul lies within the sea? Reader, it may seem very few, but the opportunity is real, if the soul could be of benefit. Indeed. Then, reader, my girl, it is yours to decide if entertaining these sad creatures is a justifiable distraction during this affair. We trust your dead judgment. Now, let us not distract you any further. You shall beat us with fists of glory. The box. We are not finished with you yet. Tiza utters at Lendo a slew of the absolute worst in profanity. Your curse could not possibly affect me any further, you fool spell, for you have taken everything from me already. But if I am to be trapped in this forsaken hole with you for the remainder of my days, then I shall shame to me that yours shall be as lawful as my own. Lendo certainly enjoys a rousing speech, though talk means nothing in the rights. The Orbiters, their fire weakens. The imps grow more and more agitated with each passing moment. Some stop spilling all the sacred grounds. Blasted creatures, these imps, get out of here! You, stay out of our way! What are those blasted creatures doing? This is a sacred tradition! 
Not some boorish spectacle. Bama. Spectacularly done. The right has nearly ended. Spectacular! What the scribes ordained. Stand not in glory's path. And it is done. The night wings prevail. No, Mayhap yes. the scribe shall simply smite them down next time. The right is complete. Tiso is very pleased that you prevail, but we should make a quick exit at this time. Blast! Where did he go? Where did he go? That infernal imp! It is a moss in disguise, a fiend! Come forth to demand me! Until the day I die! Lando sums off in a fit of anger. Tiza reappears once the coast is clear and expresses his gratitude again. What Lando said before, if Tiza truly is a descendant of the Hope the Swallow, then he has quite a leg legacy to live up to. What stirs now in the hearts of all these exiles? Until the stars align. After you and your fellow exiles vanquish the accusers, you find the lone minstrel tending to one of your own. Rookie seems to be unwell, although you cannot see it sense why. How are you feeling, sir? Uh, I just wanna go lie down, Jam. I feel totally exhausted. I see. Then please do not exert yourself, or try. The lone means through motions for you to come closer. Either Ruki appears rather disorientated and more fatigued than usual, reported feeling not entirely present, symptoms of the banishment sickness, an alignment suffered by those who frequently conduct the rites, evaluating but fleeting. He should soon be able to take part in light activities, I think, but under no circumstance shall he be able to conduct the common life. Now then, I ought not to keep you from the stars above. Please go and have a look at them, for all of us, I think, are anxious to depart this place. The stars yet shine for you, revealing various paths forward, to gaze into the darkness of night. It is good to know that Dalbert, Old Heart, and the Fate are going at this still, as I once feared for them. Their respect for the traditions of the rites has sometimes held them back. He then shares with you what the tales he attained of the next adversaries. Dalbert, Old Heart, an adversary who showed you respect and even generosity. Despite his advanced age, age he also made for a formidable opponent. He and his son. With the so called armor the helpless, ever present at his father's side, he was abandoned as an infant before Dalbert found him and raised him as he was his own. Dalbert taught his son everything he, know, he knew of his cultural heritage as a descendant of one of the Alpha chiefs thought to be descendant from John Wyman Maine himself. However, his small vocal attempts to preserve old crew traditions in the Commonwealth often fell on deaf ears, 
or even arouse the anger of officials. One day he insisted on celebrating plant song against the wishes of his family. His family's caution was well founded in this case and he was taken into custody. As for Elmer, as his father was led away, he put up enough of a fight to where he would be where he wound up sharing his father's cell and soon enough his sentence. In the downside, their faith brought them in contact with a pack of spiritual cards residing in Jamura Valley. In time, they became acquainted with the lights and helped to revitalize the long struggling triangle known as the Faith. They have since struggled only, at times flirting with freedom, though seldom getting within striking distance. Yet still, they long to find a way to return to their ancestral home and family. Perhaps the Commonwealth saw not separating those who even in their exile as an act of mercy. Still, our sympathies ought not to stray as from our cars. Good night, my dear. You bid wolf fret a good evening. It is too late to take flight, so you make plans to rest at dawn to continue your travels. Tiso has seemed somehow somewhat less cheerful since he has run in with Renda and the accusers. He approaches you, wanting for you to hear him out. Tiso seems unhappy about something Lendl said to him. Tiso understands full well why Lendl is angry with him. While Tiso does not like Lendl as a person, he recognizes nonetheless that he denied his freedom. It was a liberation right, he did what he felt necessary. He wanted to help his friend go free. Nonetheless, he still feels a certain guilt and regrets that the rights forced exiles into such situations. He fell silent for a while. Whether the eight scribes ever intended for him such as he to participate in the rights first hand is difficult to know for certain. Then, Tisa is grateful for you for, to you for listening. He knows the scribes created the rights with good intentions. He promises to keep doing his best to live up to the legacy of his scribes. He bounds up into the rafters with some of the other drive ins regardless of whether he truly is a descendant of Help the Swallow, surely the scribes would have been proud of him. The Accusers The Accusers formed under Goliathan. He is a big man, he values justice, loyalty and steadfastness. Goliathian, he says that the accusers take their name from one of his most accomplished legions from his former military days. All among them, in fact, served the Master General at one time. They represent the stoutest hearted men and women of the Empire who held true to Mur and Goliathian to the end. The golden colors of the raiments are reminiscent of their old shiny armor, is his claim. Ever shall they seek out those with the truest spirits and the strongest sense of purpose to replenish their ranks. And that's it for now. Thank you. Bye bye.